Hi, I'm working in Adobe Animate, and we are introducing audio and lip syncing to our uh, character design and our tweening. And what we're going to try to do is create something that looks a little like this. Well, hello there. And sounds a little like this. So a really short little animation, and where we've gotten to so far is we have just basically got the uh, tweening. We know about tweening, we know a few principles of animation, we got a little animation that's going on here and a little bit of frame by frame. It's all coming together. So here's how you start introducing audio. And there's three kinds of audio we're going to introduce here. We're going to have sound effects, we're going to have music, and we're going to have dialogue. And I've collected all of those things in a folder somewhere around here. Uh, there it is here. I've gone to Ben Sounds for some, some music. I've uh, found uh, some skid screech sound effects and we recorded using just an iPhone, actually using an Android phone. Uh, a little bit of dialogue and we'll show you how we can manipulate this. So this first part is just about getting the sound in there and synchronizing it. Here we go. First off, to get the sounds in there you're going to need a place to put these. So I would suggest that every kind of sound element that you have gets its own track. So for instance I'm going to put a music track here. I'm going to make another one that's going to be called uh, SFX for sound effects and I'll make another one for dialogue. And of course you might have variations on this depending on how many different sound effects you have playing and whether you can double up on some of those. And to get the sounds in there is actually pretty simple. As long as it's an MP3, a WAV, or an AIF, a common sound format like this, you can basically just say, okay, the music I'm going to put into that frame there, and I'll grab the sound and I'll just drag it onto the stage. Now that's one way to get sound into there. You'll notice as it goes in there, a waveform shows up in that track. Here's another way you can put it in. If I go to SFX to that track, I'll try File, I'll try Import, and Import to Stage. And then you got to go looking through the thing and seeing if you can find it, if you can remember where you've put all your stuff. Uh, there we go. This is a skid screech, so I'll put it in there. There's sound effects going in that way. And frankly, I quite like just clicking on the frame where I want to put it, going to the right track. I like dragging it in, so I'll just drag the last one back onto the straight stage like this. So the nice thing about these sound effects, the nice thing about uh, sound in general, is you can see the waveform that gives you a bit of a duration. Now I'm running this one at 30 frames per second. Now we have to synchronize this stuff. And as an example, tell you what, I'm going to hide some of these things because I don't want to hear the music and the dialogue. I'm just going to concentrate on the sound effects and see when that arrives. Okay, so skid screech, skid screech should be right about here, I suppose. You can click on the keyframe that it's housed in and just move it on over like this. So the sound would normally go right about there. Now we cannot hear this right now because sound has sort of different modes. It's actually the keyframe that holds the mode. So if I go to the keyframe that has the sound, when I drag it in place, it is synced up as an event. That's the default. If you want to hear it when you scrub through so that you can get the synchronization better, click on the keyframe, Anywhere, actually. It doesn't have to be right on the first keyframe, just anywhere inside there. Change the sync under the properties sound. Take that sync to a, to a stream. Now, and now you can hear it. And it's pretty loud. So the next thing you might want to do is control the sound envelope. How loud is that sound? Well, you can control that if you go to that same property and look for the effects. Now, there's some built-in effects like uh, fade in and fade out, fade to left, and all that sort of stuff. I'm going to click on this thing and it opens up a custom menu. That little pen tool opens up a custom menu and you can control the volumes. I'm going to take this down to about half the volume because it's just a little heavy. Right about there. And you'll notice you can see the start and the end. If you have a really long wave, you can adjust with the magnifying glass tools. But for now, I think I've got it. Now the next thing I have here is I've got music playing. So the music is playing all right. Nope, no music. If you want to scrub and hear it, you can. Frankly, the music gets in the way, so I think I'm not going to leave that. I'm not going to take that and turn it into a stream. I don't want to scrub and hear it. But what I do want to do is hear where the dialogue should come in. Now, the dialogue, when we recorded it, had a bunch of extra stuff. So, tell you what, let's see. If I, uh, I wonder if I can actually play what the dialogue sounds like. Yeah, if I open up the library, there's those sounds in the library now. So I could go to Well Hello there, and actually here it sounds like this. I can audition it. I double clicked it. There must be a play button. I had test. Okay, you can give us the line. Well, hello there. No. Say it again. Well, hello there. Excellent. Oh. Stop. 
Okay, so clearly the sound started there. You can see the waveform. There was a little bit of a cue. There was the actual performance. And there was stuff that we don't want. So here's the next thing that we can do with this sound. We can start trimming it up using that same tool over there. I'm going to take that dialog, click that little tool. I'm going to start using the minus, or sorry, the, the negative magnifying glass to zoom out. And once again, I know how this is going. I know there's a little bit of direction. There's the, the performance, and there's a bunch of stuff that we didn't want. So you can actually trim this up visually by doing that. And where's the end part of it? There's the end part, so I'm going to kind of pull it back to what I think is the good stuff, zoom back in on it, and you can scroll across there too just to see what it really looks like. Let's see how this sounds now when I test it. Now there must be a test. Oh, there's the test button. Well, hello there. Okay. That's about where I want it to go. I don't want any more or any less. Okay. And it trims up the sound file right there where we want it. Now we can take this thing and I say, okay, I'm going to put this right about here maybe. So it kind of screeches in. Oh, let's hear it in the audition here. I'll change its event from event to stream. And this helps you figure out where do you want to paste this thing to. He screeches in. I, I don't want him to talk that soon. I want to grab that keyframe, click it first, let go. Oops. I better try that again. Click it first, let go, click and drag. Oops. <laughs> Nuts. Ah, there it is. And move it to roughly where I want it to start. I want to pace this thing while I'm hearing it. Yeah, okay. That's about as much time as I need. Now, I animated his eyebrows going up here, too. Maybe what I want to do is I want to have him say, have his eyebrows go up when he says hello on the word lo. So, when I audition this and scrub it, lo is right about here. Be nice if I could have a, have a little visual cue there. So, I'm going to add one more track. And I'm going to call this, you know, script, so I can see what it's all about. Just to keep this, you know, manageable, I'll take that script and put it up at the very top, although I could change it anywhere else later. And I think the word low is right about here, so here's how I can put a script and give myself a visual cue for where things are going to be, because I can't quite read that wave. I'll hit an F7 in the script, and then over under the properties, I can go to label, and I can put the word low right there. So that's my cue for where the word low is. Well, hello. Oh, maybe lows a little bit sooner. I'll move it back here. Well, hello there. Good enough. And now what I wanted to do is I kind of wanted to have his eyebrows pop up on the word low. So there's his popped up eyebrows. I'm just going to grab both of those. By the way, I hope you guys are good on, on selection. You can click and drag to select, and then click again to actually move the things where you want them to go. And I'm going to put low right there. So I think at this point in time, I've got myself a fairly complete animation. I'll extend it all the way to, t to 10 seconds for the heck of it. Or maybe 8 seconds. Take all of these things, highlight all the way down, hit F5. Okay. Well, let's test the movie and see how it behaves. I know we're going to have some problems, but we can fix them. Here we go. Well, hello there. Here's the problem we're about to face. Music keeps going when you loop it over and over again in a flash animation. Here's the real problem. Every time it loops, it's going to add another occurrence of the music. So it's building on itself over and over, and it's not going to stop. And it's going to get eventually too loud. Okay, this is getting absurd. So here's the last thing you have to do with these different types. You remember that this we changed the dialogue and the sound effects to stream. That's good. This one here we left as event. Now event is good because event will play from scene to scene. It's, it's a good format to use, but it does have that problem of looping over and over again. So here's how I fix that. I'm going to go to the end where I would like to put a cork in this, and I'm going to hit I don't know, F6 or F7, doesn't really matter. Just an empty keyframe at the end where I'd like the music to stop before it starts looping over. And then I'm going to go to the sound again, and I'm going to choose that same sound. Let's see, it was Ben Sound Funky Element. That's the one. And there's one more sync format that I can use that's really good. It's called Stop. And if I put a stop there, now when I test the movie, it should stop before it loops over again. Well, hello there. We can watch it one more time. 
think I want to have the eyes pop a little sooner. And Lou there should should happen a little bit sooner. So, and so Lou, I'll move it. I'm only moving it like five or six frames. But if I do this and then slide this on back, now I'm just moving low because it's giving me a visual cue. Doesn't have any effect on the animation. But let's see if it works a little better. Well, hello there. Pretty good. So that's your introduction to sound. Hopefully this gives you a better idea of how to incorporate sound into your animations. It's fun, it's easy, you got total control. Give it a try for yourself. We'll see you in the next video.